Hello, and welcome to The Hand Cell. I'm Ron Hogan, and my guest today is Jamie Ford. His new book is Songs of Willow Frost. It's published by Ballantyne, and it's set in Seattle in the 1930s. And as someone who lived in Seattle for two years... <laughs> really? I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So I was really struck by you got it right. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, and yes. In the very, you yeah. heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering what drew you to that time and that setting as a place for your story. I think I'm emotionally wed to Seattle. Seattle's where I first had my heart broken, so there's something special about Seattle for me. But in particular, the time period of the, the Depression era, that's when my grandparents first met. And they met, they had the, the best meet cute of all time. They met in a backroom gambling parlor in Chinatown. And my grandfather was uh, a blackjack dealer and a croupier, and my grandmother was a coat check girl. And then what drew you to the characters of William and Willow? Ah, the characters of William and Willow. The, the book is, is dedicated to my mom, who passed away years ago, and, and I used to call her every Sunday night. And that first year after she was gone, every Sunday night I felt this, this longing, this loss. And so I've always wanted to write a, uh, a mother-son story, an orphan story. And there's a, there's a, you know, there's a great canon of, 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 of literature that deals with orphans, but there was something in particular about the orphans during the Depression. They weren't like Oliver Twist, where they had lost both parents. Most of the orphans had living parents, and so there was never that closure. There was never knowing who was coming back for them, or if they were ever coming back for them. And so there was this, this story of abandonment and hope and redemption, and it was this grand theme that I really wanted to explore. Well, you do it quite well, and I'm encouraging folks to take a look for it. Now, the way that the hand cell works is that readers like you send me lists of books that you've enjoyed, and then I come to bookstores like Postman's here in Grand Central, and I get authors or booksellers to go over those lists with me and come up with some recommendations. I have a list that came anonymously over Tumblr, and it's got a number of books on it. They are Jody Picot's Change of Heart, uh, Nicholas Sparks' The Best of Me, Jeanette Walls' The Glass Castle, uh, The Help by Catherine Stockett, and Elizabeth Flux, but inside I'm screaming. So it was an interesting <laughs> mix of memoirs and novels. And, yes. But there, there seemed like there were some common themes there, and I'm interested in what it inspired in you. Hmm. The one that jumped out immediately was The Help, um, which is a great book. I and mean, if you like The Help, I instantly thought of uh, Mudbound by Hilary Jordan, which came out before The Help, um, set in the same cultural landscape, as perhaps a little bit grittier. Um, and, it, and if, if you liked one and, and it left you hungry for that kind of, uh, of story, uh, I think Mudbound's a great one. Another one was, uh, another one you have on the list was The Glass Castle. Um, and I think, I think looking around the bookstore, there are so many, um, whether it's a memoir or uh, generally a memoir, but I call them the crazy mother stories. One of my favorite ones of all time is called Up From the Blue by Susan Henderson. And the interesting thing about Up From the Blue is it's a novel, and it's a powerful novel of, of a very dysfunctional family and a very dysfunctional mother. But when I read the early copy, it was a memoir. And so if you pick that book up and you read it, knowing that little secret in your heart that this is actually, it actually is true, it's an equally powerful story. I'm looking at your list, The Best of Me, Nicholas Sparks. I'm, I'm going to go really strong in the opposite direction. Um, not the opposite direction, but the same direction a little farther. Um, I think people read Nicholas Sparks books because they have uh, such a, an aspect of, of a love story and an aspect of a heartbreak and, and sometimes tragedy. And these are books that, um, that, you know, if you're a sensitive person, these are books that make, they're designed to make you cry. A book that hits all of those emotional notes in a powerful way is a book called uh, Please Look After Mom by Kyung Suk Shin. Huge international bestseller, uh, translated into English a couple of years ago, um, out now in trade paperback. And it's about uh, this mother, it's a contemporary book, who vanishes in the Seoul train station. And it's told from three point of views the, the point of view of her daughter, her son, her husband, and ultimately herself. And it will, um, it's one of those books that will totally break your heart, but put the pieces back together again in um, a magical way. Um, hopefully a, a way that they're in a better working order. That's a, that's a really great list of things there. <laughs> and I guess I'm going to continue the sure. mother theme to sure. start with, uh, in that 
I came up with a memoir and a novel, and the memoir that I came up with is one that came out earlier in 2013 called With or Without You by Domenica Ruta, and it's about a woman who grew up in the North Shore of Massachusetts, uh, and her mother was basically a low-level drug dealer, and Domenica grew up basically realizing that her brain's and her intelligence were going to be the only thing that sort of like got her out of the situation that she was born into. And so she played it straight edge for a long time to the derision of her mother and her other family members. And then when she fell, she fell really hard. And then she pulls herself back up. Mm -hmm. And it's a really powerful story, but it's also got a lot of, of funny bits in it as well. Um, but the funniness is shot through with the kind of harrowing aspects of the story. It's one of the best memoirs I think I've read in the last year or so. And then the novel that I came up with is one that I think that you'll like if you're interested in Jody or Nicholas Sparks or Catherine Stockett. It's by Chris Bajalian, and it's the novel that came out last year, The Sandcastle Girls. It's a historical novel, or, or it's sort of a bifurcated historical novel. There's a present day situation. Um, but the woman in that is finding out about an ancestor of hers who was in Turkey during the Armenian Genocide. And he splits back and forth between the two tales in a very compelling way. You know, the beats hit each other really effectively. And it's just a really wonderful story that hits all those emotional stops and, and really gets you. There are a lot of books there for you to choose from. Uh, fiction and nonfiction. So to the reader who sent that in, and to any of you who are intrigued by it, happy reading on those. Now, if you would like me to come up with a list of recommendations for you, all you have to do is go to thehandcell.com slash ask, and there's a box there where you can type in three, four, or five books that you've enjoyed, and that will get to me, and then I will come to a bookstore, and a guest star and I will go over it. You can also look for me on Twitter, as at Ron Hogan and message me there if you can fit the books into 140 characters. We have been here at Posman's in Grand Central in Manhattan. I've been talking to Jamie Ford about Songs of Willow Frost. I'm Ron Hogan and you've been watching The Hansel. Thank you.